everyone, I'm here at Marvel Studios with the head of visual development, Ryan Minerding. Hello, sir. Hello. I wish we could go to your office, but apparently it's full of spoilers. There's a lot of stuff on the walls well, that, that people can't see. Well, I have an NDA, so I'm gonna find out all the secrets after this interview when the cameras aren't rolling. But for now, let's talk about Mysterio. When me and the rest of the fans saw the trailer, we were like, holy smokes, that is one big swashbuckling, heroic looking Mysterio. And he has like a pretty kind of fun, campy origin story in the comics. So how do you start to play with that and turning it into that look? With his look from the comics, because it's essentially like, in, in some versions, it's, it's more like a, a green onesie. Yeah. Like the idea of it being more of a classic superhero suit meant we were looking at things we've done for Vision. Mm -hmm. Like just saying like, okay, how could we translate that into something that was reasonable for, for Mysterio? See, now that you've said it's a onesie, all I can wonder is if it has little buttons in the back. <laughs> it doesn't. It has a zipper somewhere, but no, no, no buttons. It's mysterio yeah. though. Very nice. <laughs> you know, one of the things we do just that automatically makes something feel more uh, real in some ways mm -hmm. is just make it metallic. I mean, <laughs> the second mm -hmm. you you use a metallic paint on his on on his suit, it just feels more real. Um, it gives life to the you know when he's moving around. There's reflections playing off of it, and it just doesn't feel um, dead or flat. He's got such a long comic book history from way back in 1964. Where did you start with those original sort of Ditko drawings and bring it into today? I mean, we, I always love looking back at, at the, the old artwork. It's, the older it is, the better, because it, it usually starts from such a unique place, and that's one of the reasons why MCU characters tend to end up looking sort of more unique. With, with the Ditko stuff, I mean, he drew hands so well, and he also, like, the, the, the weirdness of the characters really came through, whether it was in Spider-Man or Mysterio or in Doctor Strange. And then also just the, the, the main icon being that fishbowl. Like, how can we, <laughs> how can we get that in there and, and, and have it not look goofy? Well, and that's an interesting question, too, because one of the things I always think about that fishbowl look in the comics, it's so cool, but you're like, how does he get his head in there? Right. You know, if it is a perfectly round sphere, so how do you kind of solve for that? So we were actually trying to do that. We're seeing if early on it would be better if we turn it into more of a, an actual head-friendly shape. <laughs> and then you do it and it just doesn't look like Mysterio. And that's one of the things that like, when you start down these roads of, of looking at what was done in the past from the mm -hmm. comics and seeing how to translate it for screen, there's so many problems that are solved for us that we don't necessarily even register. So like I tried to do other versions of the, the, the big um, fishbowl head without the cloak or a smaller cloak and it just doesn't work. Like Ditko <laughs> got it right the first time. There's so many fun little details from the comics that always appear in the films. I'm a huge comic book reader and fan. I know our fans are as well. Do you have maybe three little Easter eggs for us that you can tell us from the original visual design? Uh, for, for Mysterio specifically? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think working in eyes as many places as we could, I think we, we got them here on the clasps. Um, they're in his, when he uses his powers, there's sort of a triangle with an eye in it. Um, there's, there's other very subtle things that I don't know if you would really want to see them if you... But I want to know. <laughs> there, if you look at something like, classic superhero costumes usually have some version of a letter, a symbol or a letter on yeah. it. Mysterio doesn't in the comics, uh, typically, other than the, the eye clasps. Sort of did that in Mysterio. There, there's a bunch of like vertical bands around his stomach that, that are essentially M's that are repeating. I love that. It's very, it's very subtle, and if once you see it, you can't, kind of can't unsee it, so <laughs> beware. <laughs> um, also, I want to say that you took a bold move and you gave Mysterio a beard. What's, what's up with Beard and Mysterio? Beard and Mysterio. Besides the fact that Jake Gyllenhaal looks great with a beard. I think a lot of it has to do with Jake Gyllenhaal looking great with a beard. Okay. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, um, this movie is Peter trying to come to terms with being his own hero and not living under Tony's shadow. And I think having another mentor that also had a goatee also is a symbol of age in some ways, mm -hmm. being seasoned in the world. And I, and more, more directly relating it to, to Tony, I think that connection is, is, is great to have visually. I got to view some of your iterations of the Mysterio entire design. How many iterations do you think you went through? He's one of those characters that can go in a lot of different directions. Any any of the characters that really have a very unique and interesting um, origin uh, visual mean that, means that when you translate it to in a story world that needs to be more realistic, it needs to be grounded in something else. So we've, I don't know, I probably tried between 60 and 70. 
I think. It, it took about that many to get through um, for, for the producers and, 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 and John to really feel like it, it was working. One of the best parts of this job is really being able to work with amazing filmmakers and, and, and turn their ideas into something that's real based on the comic origins of, of the characters. It, Marvel Studios is unique in you know, really how much we're able to try and translate from the comics and how truthful we try to be to, to the uniqueness and, and, and the sort of greatness of those icons. And working with the filmmakers to, to do that is, is, a, is a real treat. And you've been here since the very beginning of Marvel Studios, is that uh, right? Yeah, I was I was fortunate enough to, to get hired by John Favreau on Iron Man One, so it was designed the Mark One Iron Man suit, which was a lot of fun. I'm just like sitting here with a little piece of Marvel history. That's you. That's oh, you. That's very kind. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been great. And you guys, be sure to go see Spider-Man Far From Home in theaters on July 2nd.